Well, I suppose they have more than you guys salary. No, you can't. All right. Oh, wait. Oh. 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 Mechanism that we cover in this course, so make sure that you follow a step and don't get lost. So, for the slider crank mechanism, we learned that the first thing that we need to do is label the angle and then form the vectors for each link. We treat each link as a vector, so based on the way that we define the angles, we can put the arrows for the vectors. And then we can write the vector loop equation. In this case, it's going to be vector AB plus BC. It's going to be vector AC. And if you write this equation, you are almost done with the 50% of uh, the analysis. Um, we, for each mechanism, we need to have constant variables, nouns and unknowns. We should define them. And then we start the process. Based on the vector loop equation, we write x component equation and y component. AB has x component of A times cosine of theta 2 plus BC. BC has B times cosine of theta 3 equals to AC. AC has S the length of the links times the cosine of the angle, which is 0, cosine of 0, which is going to be 1. <coughs> so second equation is going to give me a y component. We are going to solve these two equations to find theta 3 and s. Uh, we are going to eliminate theta 3 first. We keep all terms which they have theta 3 on one side. We move the other term to the other side, j squared, add them up. We simplify, we get this quadratic equation. So this quadratic equation, you might get two solutions, one solution, or no solution. So for this example, A is 1, B is 2.5. We would like to know what would be the displacement analysis if theta 2 is 30 degree. You just plug in the numbers there. A is given, theta 2 is 30 degree. A and B are given, you will get the quadratic equation, which is this guy. And then you can get two values for S1 and S2. This is going to represent mode 1. This is going to represent mode 2. So S1 is 3.3116. S2 is going to be negative 1.584. Now we need to find theta 3. Theta 3 from equation 1 is going to be S minus A cosine of theta 2 dividing by B sine of theta 3 is going to be negative B over A sine of theta 2. If you plug in 3.3 and other terms here, you can get the value for cosine of theta 3. You will get two angles here. Same things here, you will find sine of theta 3, you will find two angles there, and the matching pair in this case is going to be negative 11.5. I wrote OR 3 48.5 because they are the same. If this is negative 11.5, this angle is equal to this one. Which is 360 minus 11.5, which is 348.5. So, and for the second mode, it's gonna be 191.5. Now, if I ask you to draw the mechanism of these two modes, pick one point, 
a is 1, theta 2 is 30. So the angle of 30 is this one. If this is 1, this is going to be point A. S1 is 3.16. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be somewhere here. Now, if you connect these two, this angle is 348.5 or negative 11.5, if you measure that. This is the first mode. Second mode, do the same thing. This is A. S is negative 1.5, this is 1, somewhere here. The slider is going to have the distance of negative 1.584. If you connect this, uh, we measure the uh, the angle from point B. So this angle is 191, positive 191.5. If you draw it in a scale, uh, you will find this angle should match with 191.5. If you have the book, the book has a DVD. Uh, there is a program by slider. On a slider uh, program, you can define the length of the links and it's going to draw the mechanism for you. So these are two plots that I got from that uh, program. On the back of your textbook, you can find the DVD. Um, and that's it, all about a slider crank mechanism. Any questions so far? All right. Now, let's move on four bar mechanism. Uh, the four bar mechanism uh, has the longest process among uh, the mechanism that we covered in this course. So it's going to be lengthy, but it's not difficult. This is a four bar mechanism. We are doing displacement analysis with analytical approach. So this is O2, this is A, this is B, this is O4. So first thing, uh, label the angles. I have three moving links, one, two, three. One is ground, is not moving, so I have three moving links. Uh, and no slider. So basically, I, I'm going to have three angles, one angle for each link. So the first angle can be defined for link two. It can be defined either at point O2 or point A. If you measure the angle at point O2, it's going to be this one. If you measure the angle from point A, it's going to be this one. So I pick point O2 and label it as a theta 2. Why 2? Because it's link number 2. 1 is ground, 2 is this guy. Link number 3. Either you can have measure the angle from point A or point B. I measure from point A. Theta 3. And for link 4, I measure from here. Theta 4. Now, after you label the angles, you can form the vectors. 
for link O to A, you put the arrow at the end of this link, which is point A. For A, B, you put the arrow at the other side that you measure the angle. And for this one, I should put at point B. For the ground, I pick this one. Now, look at, find the point with two arrows ending to that. The only thing is going to be point B. And try to reach point B via two different paths. So, if I want to start from point O2 and reach to point B, I'm going to go from this path, O2A, vector O2A, plus vector AB. Or, I can go through this path, O2, O4, plus O4, B. This is the vector loop uh, equation. The rest would be the mathematical process to drive the equations and solve for unknowns. So again, we define constants and variables nouns and unknowns. So the constant would be the length of the links. A, B, C, and D. Variables would be three angles that we have. Theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4. These angles are varying when the mechanism is moving. And nouns would be constant plus one degree of freedom. So one of them should be given. We assume that theta 2 is given. So in displacement analysis, we are solving for theta 3 and theta 4. So for a given theta 2, we would like to find theta 2 and theta 4. So now I'm going to write x component equation and y component equation for this vector loop equation. The x component of O2A is the length of the link times cosine of that angle. A cosine of theta 2 plus length of or vector of AB has x component of B times cosine of theta 3 equals O2, O4. It's going to have D cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so it's going to be D. I'm just writing D plus C cosine of theta 3. This link, uh, theta 4, sorry. times the angle of cosine of the theta 4. And y component just change cosine to sine. And d sine of 0 is going to be 0. So we will have 0 c sine of theta 4. We have equation one and equation two. The two equations you can solve for two unknowns. The unknowns would be theta three and theta four. What it makes the process long is find solving this system of equation because sine and cosine are nonlinear functions, so uh, to solve them you should apply some technique. So, any questions so far? Because I'm going to go, I'm going to start the process of solving this system of equations. All right, before we go through the process, I would like to talk about a tangent
transient have angle substitution. I mean, just a relate uh, a, a relation between the tangent of if you have uh, cosine of theta and sine of theta, we can prove at the end of this slide. Uh, uh, this file, you have you can see the proof. It's very easy, uh, straightforward. I'm not gonna prove that, but we can show that cosine of theta is gonna be equal to one minus tangent square of half angle theta divided by two plus. Negative top, sorry, negative top plus. This is for cosine. For the sine of theta, you can write two tangent of theta over two, one plus tangent square of theta over two. For example, if for theta equals to 60, um, 60. <clears throat> cosine of 60 is 0.5. We can say that 1 minus negative tangent square of 60 divided by 2 divided by 1 plus tangent square of 60 divided by 2 should be equals to cosine of 60, which is 0.5. I'm going to use this in the uh, Tangent of third degree is one over a square root of three. Tangent square is going to be one over third. So one minus one over third is going to over one over plus one over third. One minus one over third is going to be two over third. One plus this is going to be four over third. We can cancel out these two. 2 over 4 is going to be 1 over 2, just. But the general proof is going to be at the end of this slide. Uh, if tangent of theta over 2 is equals to t, I'm going to use the intermediate variable, which is t, and tangent of theta over 2. Uh, we assume it's going to be equal to t. Wherever you see tangent of theta over 2, just replace by t. So here I'm going to get 1 minus t square. Here I'm going to get 1 plus t square. And here I'm going to get 2t dividing by 1 plus t square. I'm going to use this two equation later in this process. Any questions so far? All right, let's back to this question, uh, to this test of question. We are solving for theta 3 and theta 4. Um, first, we are trying to eliminate either theta 3 or theta 4 and solve for the other one, and then replace this two equation to get the value for 
uh, the first variable that we eliminate. So I'm going to try to eliminate theta 3. If I want to eliminate theta 3, I keep the term on one side, theta 3 move the other term to the other side. So I'm going to get d cosine of theta 3 equals to d plus c cosine of theta 4 minus a cosine of theta 2 and a cosine of a sine of theta 3 equals to c sine of theta 4 minus a sine of theta 2. We know that cosine square of theta 3 plus sine square of theta 3 equals to 1. So if I square this, if I square this and add them up, I can get rid of I can get rid of theta 3. So a square and add them up. So I can get b squared cosine squared of theta 3 plus a square, uh, b squared <coughs> sine squared of theta 3 equals to this square. plus this square. Just take, you can take out this p square. You will get p square times cosine square plus sine square. You will have p square on left side. I'm going to expand this and write the terms. d squared plus c squared cosine squared of theta 4 plus a squared cosine squared of theta 2 minus 2, uh, sorry, plus 2dc cosine of theta 4 minus 2 ad cosine of theta 2 minus 2ac cosine of theta 4 cosine of theta 2 plus if I square these two c squared cosine squared of theta 4 plus a squared sine squared of theta 2 minus 2ac cosine of theta 4 cosine of theta 2 I keep p square still on the left side. Um, this c square cosine square. This should be c side. C sine of theta four by I made a mistake here. It was sine, but I uh, wrote cosine. Where? Uh, right there, it was sine, but when I move to the right side, uh, when I square that, I wrote C cosine of theta 4. So this term, C square cosine square, C square sine square, both they have theta 4. One of them is cosine, one of them is sine. So these two can be written as C square times cosine square plus sine square, which is going to be 1. Uh, similarly for this, a square cosine square of theta 2, a square sine square of theta 2, I'm going to get a square and d square 
I should have it there. The first three terms that you can see here. Then I'm going to have these two terms plus 2dc cosine of theta 4 minus 2ad cosine of theta 2 and these two terms. These two terms they have 2ac constant and it same, I can take them out. Minus 2ac times cosine of theta 4, cosine of theta 2, plus sine of theta 4, sine of theta 2. So we kept theta 3 in one side, we squared both equations, add them up, we could get rid of theta 3. In this equation, the only unknown term is theta 4. Theta 4, theta 4, and theta 4. Any questions so far? <coughs> All right. Um, What I'm going to do, I'm going to move b squared to right side. It's going to be negative b squared. And I'm going to move this negative 2ac to the uh, left side. It's going to change to the positive. So positive 2ac cosine of theta 4 cosine of theta 2 uh, plus sine of theta 4 sine of theta 2 equals to uh, d square plus c square plus a square minus b square minus 2ab <coughs> minus uh, plus 2dc cosine of theta 4 minus 2ab Cosine of theta two. Left side equal to the right side. Then I divide both sides by AC. If I divide both sides by AC, this term is gonna be there. Cosine of theta four, cosine of theta two, plus sine of theta four, sine of theta two equals to the entire of this dividing by 2ac d square plus c square plus a square minus b square dividing by 2ac 2dc dividing by So I end up with this equation. Uh, I'm trying to solve for theta 4. So 
So 2DC, 2AC, I can cancel out these two and this C, both C. And this 2A and this 2A can be canceled out. Just to simplify this equation, I define some intermediate parameters. K1, K2, and K3. K1 is defined as a D over A. Instead of D over A, I'm using K1. For D, K2, I'm going to use D over C, which is this guy. And K3, I define entire of this. D squared plus C squared plus A squared minus B squared dividing by 2AC. Say it again. K3 is just this guy. I'm going to rewrite as a term of K1, K2, and K3. Just see cosine of theta 4, cosine of theta 2, plus sine of theta 4, sine of theta 2, equals to this, which is K3, plus K1 cosine of theta 4 minus K2 cosine of theta 2. K3? It's just, it just it, it's an intermediate variable which is going to help us to simplify the notation. Instead of writing this, I'm just writing K3. It depends on the length of the links, just um, mathematically it's going to help us to simplify the notation. That's it. But the point is K2, K1, and K3 are, are, are nouns because they are term of A, B, A and B, C, A, B, C, and D. All right. Uh, just look at left side. If I ask you to expand this cosine of theta 4 minus theta 2, you can say it's going to be cosine of theta 4, cosine of theta 2, plus sine of theta 4, sine of theta 2. If I ask you to expand this. Now, if you look at this one, it's exactly the same as right hand side. So, left side is going to be cosine of theta 4 minus 2, theta 2. A right side is going to be this. So I'm just rewriting this one more time. Cosine of theta 4 minus theta 2 equals to k3 plus k1 cosine of theta 4 minus k2 cosine of theta 2. We call this equation for the instant equation. The last row, the last row is gonna representing the Einstein equation. We are gonna use it maybe four or five weeks later again when we are designing a mechanism. We are gonna back to this equation again. So it's the reason that we have a name for that. Uh, here I have right side, right side. Uh, I have this term on the left side that 
that's fine. And here, it's going to be cosine of theta 2, cosine of theta 4, plus sine of theta 4, sine of theta 2, which is going to be the same as Any questions so far? In this equation, the only parameter, the only term which is unknown is theta 4. But since we have cosine of theta 4 as well as sine of theta 4, uh, it's not possible to solve it uh, with linear equation. We are going to get help from a half tangent angle substitution. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace cosine of theta 4 with this, 1 minus t squared dividing by 1 plus t squared, and sine of theta 4 with this, 2t dividing by 1 plus t squared. So, we are going to solve for theta 4. Uh, back to this equation. Cosine of theta 4 is 1 minus t squared dividing by 1 plus t squared times cosine of theta 2. Plus sine of theta 4 is 2t dividing by 1 plus t squared sine of theta 2 equals to uh, k3 plus k1 cosine of theta 4, which is 1 minus t squared dividing by 1 plus t squared minus k2 cosine of theta 2. Just look at it. k1 times 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared, and minus k2 plus k3, and other sides, we are going to have these two terms. Cosine of theta 2 times this, sine of theta 2 times this. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus t squared. This term is gone. This term will be gone. This term will be gone. I should multiply these two terms by 1 plus t squared. Um, All right, we move this to the, to the other side. It's going to change to uh, negative 1 minus t squared cos. Let me rewrite it. If I move this to the, to the other side, this side is going to be 0. 0 would be equals to negative 1 minus t squared cosine of theta 2 minus 2t sine of theta 2 plus k3 times 1 plus t squared plus k1 1 minus t squared minus k2 times 1 plus t squared cosine of k2. In this equation, the only term which is unknown is t. So if I simplify that, I will get this. Negative um, cosine of theta 2 plus k3 
minus k to four sine of theta t times negative k y. This times t square minus two sine of theta two times t plus the only term which has t is negative two times sine of theta two. The other terms they don't have any time with t. And the left it's gonna be k one plus k three minus k two cosine of theta two minus Cosine of this equals to zero. Uh, now, as you see, it's a quadratic equation. This term times t squared minus this term times t plus this term equals to zero. So I define some intermediate parameters. A is cosine of theta two plus k three minus k two cosine of theta two minus k one. This is a. B is gonna be negative two sine of theta two, and c is k one plus k three. So replace this with a a t square plus b t plus c equals to zero. And solve the quadratic uh, equation to find the roots of t, which I have right here. T is going to be negative p, negative b plus and minus. A square root of b a square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Same as other quadratic equations, there are three possibilities. If this side inside the a square root is positive, then you have two distinct assembly modes. If it's zero, then you have one repeated mode. And if it's less than zero, there, there is no assembly mode. But we are looking for theta 4 and theta 3. What is the t value? t, just look at t is tangent of theta 4 dividing by 2. So after you find t, you can find the tangent inverse of t. Tangent inverse of t is going to be theta 4 dividing by 2. So Theta 4 is going to be 2 times tangent inverse of t. So you find t from this quadratic equation, you find tangent inverse of that multiplied by 2, you will get uh, theta 4. <coughs> Any questions so far? So you will get two value of t. If you find two value of t, you will find two value for theta 4. So you will get two modes, theta 4, 1, theta 4, 2. How can you find theta 3 corresponding to this? We should back to the uh, X component and Y component equation that we had at the beginning. I'm rewriting them again.
from equation 1, I can find cosine of theta 3 equals to b plus c cosine of theta 4 dividing by uh, minus a cosine of theta 2 dividing by b. This one. And from equation 2, sine of theta 3 is going to be c sine of theta 4 minus a sine of theta 2 dividing by this coefficient in b, which is this equation. Now, after you calculate theta 4, you should plug in, in this equation and find the value of cosine of theta 3. If you apply cosine inverse, you will find two angles. One, two. Plug in that angles right here, you will find three and four. Among these four angles, uh, pick the matching. Just, and you will find theta 3, 1. Do the same thing for theta 4, 2, and get theta 3, 2. Uh, on Monday, I'm going to work on one example uh, for a four bar mechanism. We are doing the same uh, the steps uh, to find the value of theta 3 and theta 4 for that four bar mechanism. Uh, the new homework has there are three problems, two of them should be done by the math lab. Oh, I was gonna I will collect the homework card. Right, so they have a beta, beta one is, one is, yeah, something like this. True. So you need if you find this point, you can connect to this and you are done. Connect to this and you are done. True. So what is this length? Uh, it's A plus B. Okay. Draw a circle with this center and this radius. Oh, okay. and then and, then and from here, here draw a circle with the uh, radius of C, and you will find oh. this two. Mm -hmm. It's a mirror. There, you have, have symmetry, and then uh, just intersect the C, A. You can find A. Okay. Um. And on, on, on other sides, you know what should it be? 
this guy. It's going to be A, B minus A. B minus A. Okay. Uh, 